Welcome to part 2 of my variant series, where I'm covering the designs that I honestly cannot use for my stem based independent creature collector, because these designs are variants of canon Pokemon. I've had these variants before I decided to go fully indie, so last time I spent a whole video going over unknowns. Don't worry, we won't go over any more Orgo today, but we will go over three different topics through new evolutions. You see, Sometimes in Pokemon, a new version would reference an older line by giving it a new evolution, or a different evolution that branches away from the older one. In this video, I'll cover two lines where I gave them a branching evolution, and one last one which is a wholly new addition. I may not use these designs for my Stemma project, but I might reuse some of these concepts in a different design down the road. So, let's start with a new evolution of Surskit. Surskit as a water strider is, mmm, what a beautiful concept about water surface tension. But we're not gonna talk about that today. Surskit evolves into Masquerain, which is much more like a moth with mimicry eye spots on their wings, but apparently they're still water striders according to Bulbapedia? Anyways, when I saw the following concept, I thought for sure that I should include Surskit in it. And the concept was the Hydrofoil. These boats look like they're flying above the water due to the funky shape below them, but it turns out it has nothing to do with surface tension. The wings below the boat are actually underwater, and it's that boat speed that generates a lift. It's kinda how wings work on a plane. The angle of the wing deflects the incoming air or water, in the hydrofoil's case, downwards, which in turn generates lift upwards. You know, Newton's third law, equal and opposite forces. There could also be a bit of the Bernoulli's principle at play, but the principle doesn't explain the whole picture. By the way, Bernoulli's principle is about how faster fluids have lower pressure, and how the fluid above the wing is faster. So a lot of explanations say that the fluid above the wing is faster and lifts the wing up because matter wants to go towards low pressure. This does happen. But that explanation alone fails to answer how the fluid above the wing was faster in the first place. There seems to be a lot of contested theories about the foil shape making lift, so for now, the combination of Newton's third law and Bernoulli's principle seems to explain most of the cases behind the foil's lift. Back to the extreme boats. The foil generates lift, a force that goes upwards against gravity, and enough of that lift would pull the hull up above the water. So I tried to make Sailor Rain here, an evolution of Surskit that's shaped like a sailboat, speeding away with their modified wing. They got the weird hydrofoils on their legs, and I also gave it air late due to how the body can dry itself and be completely above the water now, if it goes fast enough. Also the sail references Masquerain's pattern, but uh, it's just one eye spot now. Have you ever played with spinning tops before? Whether they are Beyblades or classic wooden tops, you spin them and they don't flop over. That's angular momentum into play. When an object is spinning, trying to yank the direction down perpendicularly is hard to do because it wants to go in a spinning direction, not down towards the floor. Alright, so here's another Generation 3 mod, Baltoy and Claydol, who are references to old artifacts. Those weren't exactly tops in our world, but Pokemon gave them a little spin, pun intended, and made these cool object mods. Baltoy is admittedly more like a top than Claydol, so I decided to make this a branched evolution as well. For you see, there is a special top called the Tippy Top which has a round bottom, and that round bottom allows it to change the direction to the point where the whole top flips upside down. Now there's a lot of steps behind how this toy flips. It seems that some of the major factors is how the center mass is placed relative to the curvature of the bottom, and also probably due to the friction that the round part experiences against the floor. I can share some links in the descriptions about the explanations in detail, but apparently scientists have been arguing over the exact mechanics behind this toy. So here's Tipidol, a steel type that's upside down. Now what I had in mind was that outside the battle the bigger part would be on the ground, but then they spin and flip themselves over whenever they enter combat. I'm not entirely sure if I want to make a new design of this concept for my personal project. Eh. 
Ah, the golden ratio, sometimes called the key to artistic beauty. What is this ratio anyways? Mathematically, it's 1 plus the square root of 5 and that whole thing divided by 2. Okay, but what is the ratio actually? So it's a ratio of the length versus width of a special rectangle. But this rectangle is special because you could cut out a square and the remaining length that you have, that compared to the previous rectangle's width, now has the same ratio as before. It's just, you know, rotated 90 degrees. It has the same ratio of length versus width. Alright, so the perfect golden ratio is this funny number often denoted by a Greek letter phi. So why do we say that we see the golden ratio a lot in nature? Like the coil of a nautilus. By the way, the nautilus shell isn't exactly a golden ratio. It actually follows another pattern called a logarithmic spiral, which doesn't have to have the golden ratio. But flower petals actually follow the golden ratio, and it's because of efficiency. So there's a sequence called the Fibonacci sequence. The rule is simple. Start with a 0 and a 1, and then add the last two numbers of that sequence for the next number. So 0 plus 1 is 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, 1 plus 2 is 3, 2 plus 3 is 5. Quick maths. Now we could visualize this with squares like this. Now despite looking like the golden ratio, it's not exactly the golden ratio because if you look at the initial steps for example, it's not the same ratio like you get a square of 2 by 3, if you cut out a square from the 2 by 3 you get a 1 by 2, it's not the same ratio. But check this out, the more you continue the sequence, the closer that ratio becomes to the golden ratio. Kind of makes sense because taking out a square is kind of like taking out the last number of the sequence. But let's look at the sunflowers, who have a whole bunch of disc flowers in it, which turn into seeds. They got a Fibonacci number of them, if you count them all out, and they're packed in a spiral fashion. See, if those spirals were packed in a simple fraction, the pattern opens up a lot of unused space between the spirals, so the flower ends up choosing an irrational ratio. But not even irrational numbers like pi can fill the spaces in, because pi is too close to 20 to 7, a rational fraction. So weirdly, the golden ratio is more or less a perfect fit. It's irrational and allows the seeds to efficiently pack themselves into small space. Alright, so all the sunflower talk kind of clued you in to which mon I'm going to talk about. Sunkern used to be a joke mon which had the smallest BST in the whole game until some of the later generations came out. And Sunflora is generally regarded as just weak in general. So I decided to give it a straight up evolution. Give Sunflora a golden coat which would have been a new item, and it makes Sunorum. Orum means gold, and this evolution has a bunch of spirals on their limbs. Additionally, their face shows off the Greek letter phi to some extent. I'd love to represent this concept in my own region with a completely new design in the future. Only thing holding me back is that it kind of feels like it'll be a single stager, which I don't want too many of. I already got quite a few. But who knows? Would you believe me when I say this is the shortest video out of the four variant videos I'll be making? We've gone over three designs today. We talked about hydrofoils, the tippy top, and the golden ratio. Let me know if you want to see these concepts in a completely original design one day so that I could actually use them for my independent project. I want to thank my Patreon supporters for directly helping me in these times. This is part 2 out of 4 of my variant series, so if you missed the unknown episode, check it out. Also here's a playlist of videos going over my own designs. If you liked the video, share the video to your friends, because next time, we'll be talking about direct regionals and convergent lines of canon Pokemon with that scientific twist. See you then.